on SpaceX's Starship. Was it a big mistake? Could it lead to a failure? Let's break it down and see what's really going on. First off, in our last episode, we mentioned the hot stage ring jettison, HSR. And surprisingly, it didn't spark much debate in the comments. Most of you were more interested in the filter blockage during Flight 3 or the upcoming Starliner launch. But one insightful viewer did bring it up, questioning how jettisoning the hot stage adapter affects the goal of rapid reusability. Kudos to that person for sparking this deeper dive. So what's the deal with the hot stage ring? Essentially, jettisoning this ring is a move that SpaceX believes will improve the Starship's performance. But here's the kicker. How can we still call it a fully reusable rocket if we're throwing parts away? Is to make Starship fully reusable, minimizing costs and maximizing efficiency. The hot stage ring jettison, however, seems to contradict this goal. By shedding this component, the rocket's landing mass is reduced and the center of gravity is altered. This might improve immediate flight performance, but it introduces a snag in the reusable concept. Let's take a step back and discuss why SpaceX is doing this. According to SpaceX's latest blog post on the Flight 3 report and upcoming changes for Flight 4, the hot stage ring jettison is part of a series of upgrades derived from the flight test data. These upgrades are set to debut on the next launch from Starbase, focusing on achieving orbit and demonstrating new capabilities. In simpler terms, the jettisoned hot stage ring is expected to enhance the Starship's ability to reach each orbit. It's a calculated trade-off. Lose a part to gain a performance edge. But does this trade-off undermine the vision of a fully reusable rocket? That's the million-dollar question. To put it plainly, there are pros and cons. On the pro side, by shedding the ring, the rocket becomes lighter, which can lead to a more efficient ascent and potentially smoother operations during critical phases of the flight. This could be crucial for hitting orbital targets more reliably. On the con side, the main issue is the contradiction to reusability. A fully reusable rocket is the holy grail for space travel, promising lower costs and quicker turnaround times. By discarding the hot stage ring, SpaceX may achieve short-term benefits, but at the cost of its long-term reusability goals. It's like taking one step forward and half a step back. Now, this isn't to say that SpaceX isn't aware of the trade-offs. The decision to jettison the hot stage ring is likely based on extensive data analysis and testing. They're probably weighing the immediate performance improvements against the future goal of full reusability, hoping to find a balance that works in the long run. Looking ahead to Flight 4, the changes being implemented will provide valuable data. If SpaceX can demonstrate significant performance gains and still move towards a reusable system, it might just be a win-win. However, if the jettison leads to complications or fails to deliver the expected benefits, it could set back the reusability agenda. After Flight 4, SpaceX introduced the concept of hot stage separation for the Starship and Super Heavy to boost the spacecraft's efficiency and payload capacity. Here's how it works. During hot stage separation, most of the 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster are turned off, but a few remain firing. Meanwhile, the Starship's upper stage engines ignite. This keeps thrust going and avoids the loss of momentum you get with traditional stage separation, where the lower stage shuts down completely before the upper stage starts. To make this work safely, SpaceX added an extra ring section called the Hot Stage Adapter on the Starship's interstage. This ring directs the engine's blast away from the Super Heavy booster. The result? A potential 10% increase in payload capacity to orbit. Pretty cool, right? But now now, SpaceX is planning to jettison this hot stage ring after the boost back burn. What gives? Let's break it down. In their latest blog post, SpaceX mentioned that the upcoming Flight 4 would include numerous hardware and software improvements, along with operational changes like jettisoning the hot stage adapter. This move aims to reduce the booster's mass during its final phase of flight. The fully fueled Super Heavy booster has a mass of up to 3,500 tons. As it burns through its propellant, the mass decreases. But by the time it needs to perform the boost back burn and landing, it's running pretty lean on fuel. SpaceX does something similar with the Falcon 9, only keeping the fuel necessary for a safe return. This practice minimizes the rocket's mass, optimizing it for a successful landing. By jettisoning the hot stage adapter, SpaceX can shave off even more weight. This mass doesn't significantly contribute to the landing process, so shedding it makes sense to ensure the booster has just enough fuel to complete its mission and return safe. It's a classic case of less is more. But why the fuss about jettisoning this ring if it's beneficial? Well, it ties back to SpaceX 
Fox's long-term goal of making Starship and Super Heavy fully reusable. The idea of a fully reusable rocket means not discarding any parts, which minimizes costs and turnaround times. By throwing away the hot stage ring, SpaceX is seemingly taking a step away from this idea. However, it's all about trade-offs. SpaceX is likely weighing the immediate performance gains from shedding this extra weight against the long-term reusability goals. It's a complex balance of achieving short-term efficiency while still striving towards a fully reusable system. This move could help them gather valuable data to refine their designs and processes further. Looking ahead to Flight 4, the jettisoning of the hot stage ring will be a crucial test. If it leads to better performance and smoother operations, it could justify the trade-off and help SpaceX inch closer to their ultimate goal. If not, it might prompt a re-evaluation of their strategy. So why is SpaceX jettisoning the hot stage adapter? By getting rid of this part, SpaceX aims to minimize potential difficulties during landing and maximize the chances of successful recovery and reuse. Improved control over the booster is a major goal here. The hot stage ring HSR ejection will occur shortly after the boost back burn shutdown process. This additional portion probably weighs around 10 tons. You might be wondering if this weight loss could cause a mass discharge and affect the overall mass distribution. Of course, there will be an effect, but SpaceX will balance that with the propellant or other measures to maintain stability. Now, another big question is whether they jettison the HSR during Flight 3. To investigate, I rewatched the Flight 3 launch video but couldn't spot anything. If they had done it, SpaceX would likely have mentioned it in their post. What are your thoughts? I really want to know your opinion. Rewatch the Flight 3 launch and let us know if you find any evidence. Any comment with proof will get a big shout out in our next episode. Moving on to our most important question. Does this jettison process make Starship and Super Heavy completely non-reusable? To call a rocket entirely reusable, we need to recover and reuse all the significant and costly components, such as the first stage, second stage, payload fairing, and control systems. Some components like fuel and protective shielding are typically expendable and not designed for recovery. SpaceX has officially announced that the Flight 4 timeline will closely resemble that of Flight 3, but with some key differences and improvements based on the data and insights gained from previous flights. These enhancements aim to further refine the rocket's performance and reliability. In summary, jettisoning the hot stage adapter is a strategic move by SpaceX to optimize the rocket's landing phase and ensure a successful recovery. It's a complex trade-off, balancing immediate performance improvements with the long-term goal of full reusability. Whether this approach will pay off remains to be seen, but it's certainly an exciting development to watch. In other space news, Rocket Lab successfully launched an Electron rocket from its New Zealand site at 3.41 a.m. yesterday. The rocket carried the first of two CubeSats for NASA's Polar Radiant Energy in the Far Infrared Experiment, Profire Climate Study Mission. The satellite was deployed into orbit 53 minutes after launch, marking a significant milestone in the study of Earth's climate. The pre-fire mission aims to measure the heat lost from Earth's polar regions that has not been systematically done from orbit. The two CubeSats will provide valuable data on the polar region's energy balance. The Electron rocket, standing 59 feet tall, is designed to provide dedicated rides to orbit for small satellites. This launch marked the 48th overall for Electron, demonstrating its reliability and efficiency. Rocket Lab is also working towards making the Electron's first stage reusable. Having recovered boosters from the sea after multiple launches and preparing to refly a first stage for the first time, this launch is another example of Rocket Lab's partnership with NASA for climate study missions. In summary, jettisoning the hot stage adapt is a strategic move by SpaceX to optimize the rocket's landing phase and ensure a successful recovery. It's a complex trade-off, balancing immediate performance improvements with the long-term goal of full reusability. Whether this approach will pay off remains to be seen, but it's certainly an exciting development to watch. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, press the subscribe button, and also drop your thoughts in the comment section.